Hi there, I'm Black Bright and welcome and I'm glad you're following me and watching my show. I just hope I can keep it interesting. And like I said, if you need to know anything, just drop me a line, blackbrightnews at gmail.com. Now today I wanted to talk about racism. Well, let's call it bias because racism seems to be that word that everybody shuns. Nobody wants to talk about it. It's one of those words where people kind of feel not embarrassed, but almost as though it's a bad word. It's taboo. It's, you know, everybody feels it. Well, as black people, we feel it, but nobody can talk about it. And I don't understand why that is. Um, I was watching a Rolanda show a, a couple of days ago. And on that show, she had um, some racists, some white racists come onto the show. And they were quite proud to be racists. And they had their swash stickers on their hands and on their arms. And they were talking about how they wanted to be separated from black people. And um, that they didn't want to mix with black people. And they didn't want to be near black people. And one of them even said he, they'd killed a couple of black people and hung them up to dry. And stuff like that. And I was thinking to myself, well, Rolanda is a black um, presenter. So why, if they hate black people so much, would they go on to her show? and actually get in close proximity with her because with the one that said he killed a couple of blacks she actually had the mic to, um, she gave him the mic and she put her hand on his shoulder and he was there laughing with her and talking and you know challenging what she was saying and I'm thinking to myself is this just a put on show I mean really and truly if you are that if you hate blacks that much there's no way you would go on the Rolanda show so then I was trying to think, so what is what is it that this is about? Because they sounded quite sincere in their hatred when they were talking about it. And I mean, like they said, they want to be separate. And there was a couple of young guys in, you know, on the panel and they were quite um, savage um, with their conviction. I mean, they were even talking about white people who are not um, who don't like black people are traitors and they're not really white and all of this kind of stuff. So they're really extreme. But putting that aside, we've had bias for years and years and years. And you have to wonder why after all these generations, it still exists. Bias is a more user friendly word. Why does it still exist? Why does racism still exist? I mean, centuries ago, we had it and it's still after all these years. And it's because it's subliminally fed. It's subliminally fed through the media, through legislation, through the government. The media seep it through, through their imagery and their news items. They, if you know, if a black person does a crime, they put it on, a, on the you know, front pages and they have this horrible picture of some black person who looks really threatening. And if a white person does a murder, they'll stick him in the inside front cover or somewhere obscure in the newspaper. He doesn't get the same, um, unless he's done something really, really, really bad, he doesn't get the same coverage as a black person would. And then you have how it's discreetly put done through the media, how the media segregates, not the media, sorry, the uh, legislation segregates the Immigration Act, which prevented um, black people from staying in the country even though they're British citizens, you've got the British Nationality Act that made um, nobody could be a citizen after 1973 if you were born in the country. They have, um, and then you have, yeah, and then you have the SUS law, which profiles black people mostly. And you have a lot of things that are designed, the Hostile Environment Act. All of those are there to target black people and make their lives miserable. So they do it through legislation and they do it through the government. They do it through so many ways through the government. How are they doing it? They're doing it by making people beg for their citizenship, by making them wait for years. Well, not years, but months and months and months, keeping them in anxiety, you know, just to exercise control over a population that they know need their permission to stay. It's all a part of the same thing. Why do they need that that power? Why do they feel they need it? Why can't they just, providing all the paperwork is there, they're supposed to do it all within six months. Why don't they just get it done and give an answer instead of letting them wait for 18 months to two years? 
So that's a different way it, it it's kind of um, reinforced throughout the years. Then, of course, by showing negative imagery and feeding negative news and taking away black history, they, they feed the, um, the lies to their children. And so that you have a, a group of young children who have no idea about their past, the same way as a lot of us grew up without knowing our past, who have this um, who have this thought process about black people, and then that is permeated throughout the years. I mean, this is very, very basic. I mean, we could say that, okay, now that we have mixed races, um, there's no more prejudice. But, you know, you find that mixed race, they even have a hard deal. They, they can't go on the white side because the majority of them are considered black, so they don't really have a choice but to go on the black side, the majority of them, although some of them kind of stay on the white side. So they don't really have a choice. And so they're given sometimes a hard deal and made to feel as though they don't belong. They're somewhere in the middle. They want to stay, you know, they want to be fair to both parents, but they have that internal struggle. And it is the, it is because of the way that the, um, the society perceives each other. Why can't, why does there have to be that differentiation based on colour? I don't know if you remember that lady who did the, um, who did it based on the colour of the eyes. It was called the blue eyes experiment. You can always look it up, but that was a part of the same thing, victimising people because of the colour of their eyes. And as long as, until it's confronted, until people are not afraid to talk about it, as I know, I speak to people who are obvious racist. They're not racist to me, but they're racist to other people. And when I try to get to understanding why, they become defensive and they withdraw. It's almost like they don't want to be caught out being racist. They don't even, I don't even think they realise that they're being racist or they don't want to be called racist. You know, but until it comes to the fore, I mean, on that Rolanda show, that was a good opportunity to bring it up, really bring it up. But instead, she was there laughing with them. I mean, how can you laugh with somebody who said that they've murdered, they've hung, they've lynched a black man? How can you laugh with that person? How can you have that person on your show? You must have known he'd done it while you're asking. But how can you have these people on your show unless it's to educate Rather than to reinforce the hate, they need to be educating us why they feel that way. But that, that message wasn't getting through. They weren't educating the audience. They were just being hostile. And then, of course, you had some black people in the audience were, that were standing up and challenging them. And then you could see um, the white guys looking at them in a certain way. And you don't, you're not really getting to the understanding of why there is that hatred. Segregation is one thing. If you want to be separate and you want to go and live somewhere else, that's up to you. But I don't understand why that then has to lead to murdering black people or hurting them or abusing them or, you know, where the police um, overreact when it comes to black people. And, you know, with the stand your ground, they, they shoot them indiscriminately. I don't understand why that all has to take place. I can understand people don't like certain people. I understand that. We can't all live in a world where everybody loves each other. But what I don't understand is why that hatred has to extend to violence. That's what I don't understand. And I don't understand where it comes from because those um, those people in that on the panel, in that Verlander show, they were obviously comfortable enough to be in the presence of that black presenter and be in the presence of an audience that was mixed. A lot of black men went there and they obviously felt comfortable. Maybe it's just, maybe it's because it was two, but it's not like there was a whole heap of them. There was only a few. So they obviously felt comfortable enough to be in that environment. So therefore, what is it then? What makes them... Um, like that, if they're willing to accept, well, not accept, but tolerate, I'll say, they're willing to tolerate somebody like Rolanda just to be on the show. 
even if, even if it is to advocate hatred or whatever it is they advocate but even if it is to do that but what makes them even be it put themselves in that position because if I was a white person and I hated black person I wouldn't want to be anywhere near them unless it's this thing just to say say it maybe you get pleasure maybe there's masochists or something or sadists they get pleasure in just spouting it out maybe that's what it is and maybe it is about that maybe it's just about control and a way of controlling because maybe because when you think about the way the legislation is written that is about controlling a mass of people that you wouldn't be able to control openly you can control them indiscriminately through legislation through the government through by you know show your bias in that way in a way that you wouldn't be able to do it in an open forum and maybe that's what it's all about maybe it is all about control you know being able to control this race that you're not quite sure of you're not quite sure where their heads at so you keep kind of doing a lot of provocative things to see which way it's like an experiment they do that they kill a few men and think oh yeah I wonder how they're going to react to that okay we'll take their babies away let's see how they react to that okay we're going to um, start um, being obviously biased in certain situations let's see how they react to that and keep pushing 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 until you get the reaction you want you know like they put those rats in a cage that's what it's like it's just like um, they're not quite sure how to get full control they haven't got full control yet but they're angling it how to do it and that's what I think it's all about I think the racism is one thing but it goes much deeper than that it's much further than that I'm not quite sure what it is or but it, it's managing to seep through the generations until we're here now 2019 still facing the same same situation but on different levels it's more subliminal now um, back in the 1400s it was more overt but the sensations are still the same and the outcome is still the same you've still got two races of people that are treated disparaging there's a disparaging difference and so which needs to be put in balance and corrected in some way and you can't do that with um, talking to people it has to, there has to be something that changes the heart and the mind in order to change the outcome and there was a guy on there he was an ex Ku Klux Klan member on that um, Rolanda show and he came and he was talking to them and she was asking him how did you turn around and he said something about oh this minister helped him but it wasn't a convincing argument to me it wasn't an argument that would convince those people who had that hatred to change so to me it wasn't coming from a sincere place there had to have been something deeper to make you turn from Ku Klux Klan member to somebody who embraces um, the black culture or at least tolerates or whatever it is he does but you can't just tell me that it's because oh he made this analogy about um, black man sitting on somebody's shoulder and then on a white man's shoulder and he was the eyes and the other one was the feet I mean no, that's not going to turn people's hearts and minds you need a credible story genuine sincere something that is going to talk to these people who are so full of hate and so full of fear about black people need somebody who's got some real gumption to speak on it I mean I I don't know what it is you know I don't as a, as a black woman um, you know living where I live I don't and I'm not experiencing that I don't know what it would take for somebody to be honest it has to take the people from the top because when you think about the footballers if they had somebody um, at the top saying listen football's going to stop if you don't stop this behavior but there again they'd still have that behavior in their hearts so it'd have to be a change through the media through the government through legislation to bring back balance but as long as the media the government and the and, you know the legislation is all geared against black people 
and and this is something that permeates each century it's not going to stop so it's the people at the top who need to make that change and I'm it's not in their it's not in their interest or their benefit to change at the moment because the people because the black people are the ones that they need to keep down in order to pop themselves up so anyway that was my little um, bit about why the bias continues over the years can I have your thoughts and no um, just no what you call it no rude or disparaging or offensive remarks please this is a respectable site and I'll just delete anybody who puts up inappropriate remarks that's all so they won't get very far and that's all for now bye bye